Welcome back friends to this new video. Topics covered in this video are Trial Mix Design Before pouring the concrete we need to finalize the quantity of element required for 1 cubic meter of concrete mixture. This is done through Trial Mix Design. In simple, this mix design gives us the formula by what proportionate each element need to be mixed. Let me explain about the basic data associated with the mix design. First, cement type in this case ordinary Portland cement mixed with silica is used. Second, slump requirement this we will discuss later in the video with demonstration. Third is the mix design table. First column tells about the list of elements required to achieve our desired strength. Second column tells us about the size of the element. Third column tells us about the condition whether dry or wet. And fourth is about the weight in kg required for one cubic meter of concrete. So. After the trial mix is done cylinder or cube will be taken. Then the cylinder or cube will be kept in the water tank maintaining proper temperature. After 3 days, 7 days and 28 days the cylinder will be crushed and the compressive strength will be noted. If the compressive strength meets our requirement then the trial mix design is passed. Or we have to repeat the process by changing the quantity of element. Soil Investigation before excavating the pits, we need to know about the length, breadth and depth of the pit. For that first we need to know about the physical properties of the soil. This can be achieved through boreholes. Rig will create the borehole. The soil samples will be collected at different depths. Later the samples are sent at lab for identifying the strength, density, compaction, angle of friction and soil bearing capacity. Depending on the soil bearing capacity the length, breadth and depth of the foundation is determined. Foundation drawing. Depending on the soil investigation parameters foundation drawing are prepared. Data that can be analyzed from foundation drawing are. Rebar. From the rebar list we can prepare the bending schedule for procuring reinforcement. Pit size for excavation. Footing and pedestal. Depth and size for concreting. Stub slope for stub setting by prop. A foundation layout mentioning the standard and dimensions. Pit marking. As per the pit marking schedule pit marking at site is done. For best result use gypsum to outline the pits. Excavation. Depending upon our necessity we can use excavator or JCB to excavate the pits. If hard rock is encountered rock breaker is used or blasting is done. The excavated pits. Stub setting. Stub setting can be done either by template or by prop. In this video we will see the stub setting by prop. 
Compaction When is completed proper dressing of the pit need to be done manually. Loose soil need to remove and proper level should be maintained. For better soil settlement compaction is required. This can be done by plate compactor or jumper compactor. PCC or plain cement concrete. After the compaction is over a polyethylene film of 300 micron is laid inside the pit. Concrete is transported from batching plant to site through concrete mixer trucks. In areas where batching plant is not available self-loading transit mixer is used for concreting. Reinforcement binding As per the foundation drawing the reinforcement binding is done. The quantity of longitudinal rebars laid in each direction needs to be cross-checked with the drawing. Each intersection of longitudinal rebars needs to be binded with 1.5 mm of steel ties. Chair rod need to place between top and bottom rebars to maintain uniform spacing. Once the footing and pedestal rebars binding are completed they are placed inside the pits with boom trucks or crane. Prop setting Stub is placed inside the pedestal. Ensure that the cleats at the bottom are properly tightened. Prop are fixed to temporary hold the stub. Surveyor will set the total station at the center of the location and perform the stub setting. Data check during stub setting. Half diagonal. Back to back. Flange distance. Slope of the stub. Verticality of the stub. When all the said requirement matches properly, prop are fixed permanently till the completion of pedestal concreting. Form box work. After completion of stub setting form box work is done. In case of DFR location under cutting of 300 mm is done, so form box work is not required. Use waste engine oil in the inside portion of form box for better concrete finishing. Cover block of 75 mm need to be placed in sufficient number to avoid expose of reinforcement. Concrete quality check. Concrete temperature above 32 degrees Celsius should be avoided. The slump test measures the consistency, workability, and ease of flow of fresh concrete. It can also be used as an indicator of an improperly mixed batch. This cone is filled with fresh concrete in three stages. Each time, each layer is tamped 25 times with a two feet metal rod. At the end of the third stage, when the cone is filled the mold is carefully lifted vertically upwards. The concrete then slumps.
The slump of the concrete is measured by measuring the distance from the top of the slumped concrete to the level of the top of the slump cone. If the collapsed slump meets our design requirement we can proceed for pouring. Concrete cylinder need to be made for each leg. Later, after 28 days need to be crushed to verify the acceptance criteria. Reinforcement Cement Concrete RCC. Prior concrete placing, the concrete surface needs to be cleaned properly. Concrete shall be consolidated by the use of vibrator to ensure compaction of concrete into a dense homogeneous mass without honeycomb. Once the footing is completed chimney form box work is done. Proper support and spacer are fixed to withstand the concrete load after pouring. Stub slope, flange distance, back to back and half diagonal need to be checked once again before pouring. Ensure that the earth strip and copper clad wire are connected to stub and reinforcement before pouring. Curing period of minimum 10 days is required after the concreting is completed. This enhances the strength and durability of concrete. The top of the foundation is coped at an angle of 15 degrees starting from the heel of the stub, to prevent accumulation of water. Below grade surfaces. Primary use of tar coat is to protect the concrete surface from chemical attack and ingress of water and gases. Backfilling. The backfill material shall be free of organic matters, rubbles, cobbles, boulder and other deleterious substance. Maximum particle size allowed 100 mm. Backfill material to be placed in uniform layer not exceeding 200 mm. Each layer need to be compacted properly. It is advisable to remove the prop after the backfilling is over. Grinding Grinding is done to provide a smooth finishing to chimney. Above grade surfaces White PU is applied on the exposed portion of foundation. It provides a solar reflective UV resistant waterproofing membrane to the foundation. If you have liked the video please share and subscribe.